All right, welcome. Today we're going to do weekly challenge four. Uh, what this challenge is, is they have provided us text soup, if you will. And from this text soup, they want us to strip out all the data elements into its own column, uh, and that's it. Well, no, that's not true. Um, if you look at the instructions, it's not just to strip out the dates, but they also want you to standardize it so that they all follow the same format, okay? So looking at uh, the text soup that they provided us again, um, what you see here is you have roughly the same pattern, which is a bunch of text, some date in the middle, and then uh, sandwiched off by some more text, okay? Um, right off the bat, you know, usually when you're dealing with text elements or string elements and trying to separate them, uh, you think of delimiters. Uh, in within Alteryx Designer, that tool specifically is called text to columns. Uh, in other applications like Word or Excel, you know, there's just some form of delimit or something like that. Um, the problem with text to columns and delimit tools to be uh, in general is that they really uh, are based off the idea that you have some unique character to delimit off of. In our case, we don't have a, a unique character. You know, when you scan through the when you scan through your rows of data, um, what do we have here? You know, like let's let's look at row number two. Between the dates and the text, there are no unique characters other than the fact that um, the date's the only element within the text that has a digit. So if we want to delimit off of this, we would have to delimit off of specific digits. In this case, we'd have to delimit first off the number zero to cut off the front, front end, and then the number six to cut off the back end. And then after then, we'd have to build in some additional logic to reconstitute in uh, the date. Um, but then the problem with that is, you know, whatever we apply to this row has to be applicable for all the rows. And what, and you know, just thinking about that logic, it's so specific that it would just break for all the other rows. Okay. Uh, additionally, you know, if you look at row number three, the pattern itself breaks as not just the numbers, but also the pattern itself breaks here. For row number three, we would probably, if we're going to use the delimit tool, we'd have to delimit on a space and then the, the, the digit zero. But if you delimit on space, as you see here, this text field has so many spaces that you'd have to, you'd have so many fields and then have to sift through and rejoin and then recreate your date. So the short of it is, you know, when you're trying to split out text elements, the delimit tool would be the first step, but um, it really requires a specific character that's unique to what you're trying to, to fish out. And in this case, we just don't have anything um, unique enough. It's not impossible, but it'd be very tedious. And to kind of absorb that kind of approach towards data cleanup would probably uh, do you a disservice rather than make you a better data analyst. So um, with that said, what we're going to do here instead is we're going to use the regex tool, OK? Um, where do you find the regex tool within the Alteryx Designer? Well, it's in the ribbon under the parse tab uh, under its own tool, OK? Even if you didn't know that, you could type it in here, um, regex, and it will pop up. And then if you don't really know regex, you can click on the example file, and it would pop up uh, an example workflow for you to then test and kind of better familiarize yourself with it, OK? Um, with that said, um, Regex is an advanced concept, okay? So what I'm about to do, if it doesn't make sense, uh, don't trip. It's, it just is what it is. It's, it's a little bit trickier and you probably should take a, a dedicated class towards understanding what regex is, okay? But in short, regex is like the delimiter, but more robust. You know, anything that has a pattern that you need to pull things out of, regex can do. So it's a pattern identifier and then it, and then it, it allows you to take that information out and do what you will with it, okay? So the regex tool, okay, first you have to do is you have to configure it correctly. Uh, as of at least 2020, the uh, version 2020, let me see here, yep, 2020.3, um, the output configuration window has four outputs. Those outputs are replace, tokenize, parse, and match. Uh, replace is what it is, you know, you, you, you dictate what your expression is, your pattern, and then it'll replace it with whatever you wanted to replace it with. Tokenize is finding that pattern and then stripping it. Parsing is finding that pattern and then identifying it in new fields. And the match is finally just find, finding whatever expression you write here and then reporting back to you whether or not it exists. So you might use match for like a QA type of situation. So in our case, we're just going to use parse. I mean, we could probably use tokenize. No, we don't want to use tokenize because they don't want us to touch the field. So we're going to use parse, which is just scan through the text and find me the pattern that I'm looking for, OK? So a little bit more about regex, and I'll try not to get too much into the weeds because this isn't intended to be a regex tool tutorial. 
But um, regex is a sublanguage in its own right. It exists across a lot of different platforms and languages. So um, you know, you'd see it in R, you'd see it in, in Python, you even see it in, in Word if you're a little bit more advanced in in Word's functionalities. Um, but basically, it's a sublanguage. Uh, uh, it's a sub, it's a sublanguage. Okay. So what that means is, you know, it uses your typical like characters, but they in those characters in themselves mean something. So for example, this plus sign within regex means one or more okay so uh regex is this this series of sublanguages that that you use to dictate a pattern for it to sort of digest and then do do other things beyond that okay so in our case what we're going to do is we're going to dictate the pattern of these date fields okay so um so here it is uh here let's let's go here so it's a little bit bigger so Strategically, what you should do, um, or at least what I like to do, is I like to take it all in whole and then try to figure out what's the most efficient, most um, cleanest way of, of getting getting all these dates out. But for the spirit of this problem and also to really help illustrate the steps that I'm doing, I'm just going to do it one by one, you know, uh, and then go from there. Um, and so what I mean by that is, you know, at the very least, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the dates and kind of identify what appears kind of the most, the pattern, um, and then just start with that. And so right off the bat, I can see that a common pattern is text, two digits, three text, four digits, and then text. Okay, so I'm going to use that because I see that a, a few times around here. So regular expression, you have to write it here. Um, what I'm going to do is using the sublanguage, I'm going to say, hey, look, look for anything with two digits, a dash, three words, a dash, and uh, do we need two? Which one's four? We're going to do four, OK? Four digits, all right? In addition to that, um, as part of the tool, you have to tell it, uh, you have to tell it which expressions are relevant uh, for it to pull out. And the way to do that is to add it in parentheses, OK? When you add things in parentheses, you are dictating to the regex tool that, hey, whatever pattern is within these parentheses, I actually want you to pull out. Why would you add parentheses and why would you add expressions that you're not interested in? Once again, I'm not going to get too much into it, but um, it ugh, um, th there is value there. Okay, There is value between identifying groups and not identifying groups. Um, but to keep it simple, um, there's a reason why sometimes you want to put things in groups and sometimes why you don't Okay, without getting too far off off uh, what the intention of this this tutorial is. So we, we we group it together and then we run it. OK, now if you're familiar with regex, you might be thinking, all right, that's not the most efficient way of writing perhaps this pattern. And if, if that is your thought, you are correct. So another thing that kind of makes regex difficult to learn is that similar to workflow design, it is a bit of an art and there's lots of different ways for you to write a pattern here. I wrote slash D uh, and then brackets four, which which symbolizes, hey, look for four digits. But I could have very easily written something like slash D plus, which is saying, hey, look, find me one or more digits. I could have written something like, hey, find me any non-space character that that's in a group of four. It, it really just depends on, you know, what your problem is and your preference, OK? And, and really what's going to dictate what's ultimately the right way to do it is just whether or not you can fish out the information. So that's my slight detour in like specifically how I write these expressions. Just know that there's a bit of an art to it and that there's not necessarily a right or wrong other than what you ultimately want to get out of. OK, if it gets you to the same place, it's fine, much like how people design workflows. Some is not necessarily the end of the world if it takes you 10 steps to build a workflow versus three. Um, it's just a matter of preference and and there can be further arguments made there between like super efficient like workflows versus really fleshed out workflows that are like a billion steps okay um so i'll stop there so we have written out here a, an expression to pull out of the text soup okay and as you can see here it has successfully pulled out a few of them but not all of them so what is the next step well I mean, all we can do is we got to keep doing it until we pull all of them because ultimately we need all the data here, right? So we're going to do it again. Uh, what you can do here is you can put on another regex tool, uh, but for the sake of ease, I'm just going to add on that condition to our existing regular expression. And the way to do that is I add this pipe. And what that pipe is saying, hey, look, look for this group and, okay, and this other group. 
So what's that other group going to be? Well, I'll just look at what's missing here. What's this null field? So the null field here indicates that if we want date rather than digit word digit, we need to do word digit digit. So that's what I'm going to do. OK, so I'm going to do digit. So the first one is slash D. There's two digits. Uh, how did it work? There's a space. Oh, three. Uh, oh, oops, I'm completely wrong. Okay, so it's a word, three words. Then there's a space. And then there's a digit, two digits, and then a comma, and then a space, and then a digit that's in an increment of four, I believe. Yes, OK. And then we're going to add parentheses to tell Alteryx, hey, grab this guy, and we're going to run it and see if it works. And as you see here in the second regex, so every time you do a new group, it will create a new column for you automatically. And you can rename it here if you want. but uh, once again, I don't want to get too much into it. There's some strategy there too as well. So we grabbed it, so we keep going forward. So what's the next one? Um, two digits, word, two digits, okay? Now, if you notice here, it's actually very similar to what we did before. So there's two ways about, uh, two ways we can approach this. One is we can write a new regex line, or we can modify the previous one to be a little bit more greedy and robust in how it identifies the pattern. So why did it not pick up this one? The reason I didn't pick up this one is because if you look here, if you look at this code right here, my pattern is specifically saying, give me only things with two digits, three three letters, and then four digits. That works for here, two digits, three words, four digits, but it doesn't work for here, and it looks like it doesn't work for the majority of the other ones um, because they have two digits at the end. So what I'm going to do here is, once again, there's lots of ways you can do it, but I'm going to put a range. I'm going to say, rather than give me only things with four, why don't you give me things between two and four, okay? And I'm going to rerun this. So if you notice here, a good majority of these follow this pattern two, three, two, whereas before this pattern was for two, three, four. I'm going to rerun this with my new little change, range change, and what you're going to see is, boom, you get a lot more in, okay? And then, so let's move on. So what's wrong with this one? This one is word, text, word, or word, text, or uh, word, digit, digit. Can I salvage this with this? Uh, yeah, maybe. Digit, 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 okay. Okay, all right, well, let's, I'm trying to think whether or not I should keep adjusting these ones or keep building more. It's it's fine, I oh, oh, actually, January 5th is very similar to this. The only difference is a comma, so, what am I going to do? I'm non space. OK, um, because these two are so similar, I'm going to merge. I'm going to adjust this logic to pull both of them in. So how am I going to do that? If you notice here that the real difference is November 16th comma versus sub January 5th, nothing space. So I need something that takes into account um, commas and digits. And the way to do that is instead of doing digits, I'm going to say, hey, take any non-space character, OK? And I'm going to get rid of the brackets, because non-space is pretty greedy. So it's going to just, it should recognize digits and the comma. So I'll run that and see what happens. And so as you can see, nope, it completely blanked. Uh, let's see what we're going, let's see what's going on here. Uh, OK, so space, oh, there's that comma, there we go. So um, so if you didn't notice that here, let me do that again. So I actually left uh, a writing regular expressions is tricky. It's all or nothing. So um, whenever you write a pattern, it has to fit that pattern exactly. The reason why this is breaking here and it's giving me two null values is because I now replace that digit condition to a non-space condition. So it's going to pull any non-space, non-white space value. Um, so in this case, it's going to pull one, six, and comma. And then on the bottom case, it should pull five. The reason why it breaks here now is because I actually left in the, the pattern for the previous expression, which is that comma. I wrote digit, comma, so on and so forth, right? But because right now I'm indicating that I want to pull all non-spaces, it kind of like spazzes out because it's going to pull all non-spaces. And then as part of the as part of the pattern, it's going to say, OK, after that, there should be some comma in this thing I'm pulling out. But it's not. It's not going to be it's not going to be there because this 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 condition here already captures the comma. So that's why we have to take it out and rerun it, and it should work then. Uh, no? 
Well, now I just got like pie on my face. It worked for this one, but it didn't work for the other one. Why is that the case? Um, I want you to take three words, a space. Oh, oh, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Okay. Um, also, so uh, a non-space character, um, you have to dictate the, the length of degree. So I'm going to add a plus here. So what that says is, hey, give me a non-space character, one or more of. Before, it was just saying, hey, give me just one of the, get, just find one character with a, with that's not a space. So if you see here, now it works. Okay. So that was, that was the mistake there. So it's a little tricky, but um, this is ultimately where we're going towards. Okay. And hopefully I haven't lost you yet. Um, you know, I, I think probably the most value here is if you already know regex and you're kind of walking through through this with me. But um, you know, this is part of it, just trying to figure out like how to get it. Okay. And then finally, we have two more. What is that? Uh, digit or digit. So that applies to this one. So why didn't you get it? It's because there's four. So we can change that one. And then why does this not work? Because digit or digit. Similarly, it's because I was too specific. So this one fails because July is a forward thing, and the other one I had was three words. So I'm going to do say, hey, pull me anything between three to four words, and then same same with this other one. This one down here fails because I'm only looking for two digits in the beginning and nothing else, but this is only one digit. So I'm going to say, hey, give me a range. Pull one to two digits. If I run this, it should capture everything, and it does, okay? All right, so then we are basically there. We're we are 80% there. We just need to format that, format these now in the right case. Okay. So how do you format these? Uh, what you do is you, of course, use the formula tool. All right. So we do that here. Pull it down for a little clarity. And what I'm going to do is, you know, to to really capture what we're doing here, I'm going to replace this column with whatever I change it with. So I'm going to say, hey, take this column, and whatever I'm going to do with it, replace the value. So how do you format date values, date stream values? Use the date time parse function. So date time parse, and it asks for two things, two variables. One is the date field, which is regex out, and then the format in which this date is coming in. Okay. So I'm going to tell it within uh, bunny years because that's the the, the notation here. Um, what's coming in is first a. Oh, I don't know if it's going to work because this is. Oh, you know what? Okay. So similar to regex. Um, Similar to regex, uh, daytime parse is specific. So what I was going to do was I was going to shove in uh, the date value and also tell it what date's coming in. But I just realized that the date values are not all uniform. Some have a four-year end, and some have a two-year end. And that matters when you're trying to date parse. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go back and actually add an, an explicit third, uh, third group to pull off of. Okay. So what that looks like is so. Uh, Two to so I want to separate the two two out. So I'm going to return this back to explicitly looking for things with four uh, four things at the end, and also and conversely change this to two. And if I run it, there should now be those three split out. Okay. So now if we look at this, there should be they they should all be the same format within their column. So it's four years. Do too. So that's good. Okay. So let's go back to fixing this. So for the first one, we need to tell um, daytime parse how's this coming in, um, and and what that format is. This format uh, notation itself is a bit of a sublanguage like uh, regex, but the sublanguage is just within the the scope of all tricks. Okay. And there's documentation there if you want to check it out. Um, I mean, if, here we go. Let's see. Go to daytime functions as a in the documentation, you can see here, these are the specifiers that you need to use to use this equation, okay? So date time functions, if you want to look it up. So in our case, it's going to be date, month, year. So that's going to be percentage D. And you have to write it in the exact same order it's coming in. So percentage D dash percentage uh, month dash percentage year, I think. I think capital Y is the full one. Let's check it out. It might, might not work. It did not work. Um, I think because it's B, I want to say. Oh, how embarrassing. So date. Let's go back and look at what date is. I thought it was D. Day of the month. So it should be D. Day dash. Let's see what's month. Oh, it's I used it wrong here. Month is B. That's why it's not M. You run it cleared. Oh, nope. 
now it's cleared, okay? So as you can see here, this is the format that we want the final solution in. So we're getting there, year, month, date, year, month, date. And so um, you could do this all here if you, um, yeah, I'll just do it all here, okay. So now that we did for this, we just need to do it for the other two columns. So regex two, same concept, convert this to two, um, but we just need to change the format. So this one, this time is coming in as kind of like a uh, mix and match here. So it's gonna come in as three, um, the three letter acronym for months, a space, the day of the month, okay, and then a comma, Oh, I might have to split this too because it has. Um, I may have to split this too. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And then space, comma, and this time it's small y because it's the full, full year, I believe. But let's let's see what happens. Yeah. So we lost it because, similar to before, you know, the the comma is what makes it different. So um, we're gonna have to take a step back once again to regex and create a distinct group for this guy. So what that means is, gosh, I mean, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so this part might not make sense, but because um, I, I don't want to capture both of them now. It makes more sense for me to just do it explicitly to there. So we'll do that for that one. We're going to fix the old one, and then we're going to add this one here. Another one. And what we're going to say is, um, just give me a digit. No more. Actually, I'll do the same for this other one. I have four now. November 16th is up there. Oh gosh, I did not get the bottom one. Why did I not get the bottom one? January 5th, three words, space, one or more digit. Oh, there's a comma there again. Remove that, it should work. There you go, January 5th, okay. And let's just do, so we're back to where we need to be. So um, that works, now we need to convert these three. So let's add that in, regex three, okay. Change that to three. This is coming in as date. All right, so date dash three letter acronym for months or letters for month, and then two years for a year. There we go. Oops, percentage year, comma. There we go. Work. That looks weird. That looks like it works. No, it did not work. Why is that the case? Dashes. The date. Month. And the year. The year, oh. There we go, that should work. There you go, see, there I fixed it. All right, do that. And then lastly, we just gotta do that last one. So then regex four. Same idea, oops, four. What's it look like? So it's first the three letter acronym, we got that. So B space, D space, four letter year. Okay, all right, so as you see here, we are now done converting. Okay, we're done converting all the, the, the date fields that we pulled out into the format that our solution ultimately wants it to be. So the next part is just cleanup. So first and foremost, uh, we need to create a column that contains all of them. How do we do that? The most easiest is to recognize that this is a, these are all strings. So we're just gonna concat across. Um, the reason why we could do this because logically the nature of how the regex works is there should in theory, well, no, that's not true. Um, if you did it correctly, in theory, there should not be any value other than in the column that it belongs in, okay? So assuming that you've done that correctly, and I'm gonna make that assumption also, there's only 17 rows I can look through and see. Um, assuming you did that correctly, because there's strings, you can just concatenate them, and that's what we're gonna do. So um, we're gonna call it date time out, the same column as their solution file, and we're just gonna add them all together. Regex one, that is an ability of strings to do. You can just add them all 
concatenated that way. I'm going to run it, and as you can see here, our final output is all of these fields in one. Okay, and so we're almost there. We just need to clean it up with a select tool. Okay, run that also as well. Okay, you see that? Okay, and we are essentially done. Um, now to just do some quality assurance. So what that means is I'm going to now check it against this one. How do I personally check it? I like to union tools together. So what I mean by that is I'm going to take all my data from here. And I'm going to stack it, or I'm going to stack the solution on top of all my data from here. And then I'm going to remove all the duplicates. And so logically, the way this works is if my answer is exactly one to one with this one, when you stack it, there should be exactly half half duplicates and unique values. So that's what I'm looking for. And that's why I do this little bit at the end. So when I stack it, I have in total, um, I have in total 34 values. Okay, I stacked 17 from here and 17 from here. So total, I have 34 values. Unique values, I have 17. Duplicates, I have 17. So what that shows me is cut right down the middle. I just put together two files that were exactly the same. And so based on this result, that is the solution. So.